What is the most important bit of sound equipment? All those things that you need to achieve a successful soundtrack. What's the most important piece of sound equipment? Anybody? Microphone. microphone. It's very important to have a good microphone to get the, to get the sync sound. Yeah, perfect, yeah. The room you're monitoring. The room you're monitoring it. It's very important to have very good monitoring. Yes, all of that's important. The <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Ears. It's the connection between this and these that lead you to a successful mix. And hopefully, I'm going to point out a few pitfalls that you will avoid. Um, you must set your monitoring level correctly. And don't bloody touch it. And I can't emphasize that enough because I hear lots of student work and it's doorstep. Suddenly one level, then it goes to another level, then it comes to another level. And that's because they've mixed it on different days and they've set their monitor level all right the first day. Then they set it too loud, so they mix the next bit too quiet. Then they set the monitoring level too quiet and they mix the next bit too loud. Same on location. Make sure you set your headphones to a sensible level so that they're not too loud because you'd be tempted to record things too quiet. And they're not too quiet because you'd be tempted to record things too loud. You need to work out in, um, and I'll give you a, a quick, there's lots of ways of doing this technically online. If you look up setting up your monitoring um, to Dolby sounds, there's lots of technical ways, but there's a quick and dirty way. You can't mix the correct level if you're monitoring too quiet. Always, you should always be using meters. Do, and now I know you all work for yourselves at the moment and you're mixing your own films, mixing your own music, but you must start using meters because in your own little world of delivery, you're not delivering to a set specification necessarily. Mostly working in television, I mix to NEG23 LUFS. Does anybody know what that means? EBU R 128 and that is ingrained. And I picked up some work recently and I was surprised. I said, oh, why haven't you got someone else to do this? You know, and they said, well, we had but they delivered it and it got sent back because it wasn't the right specification. You will lose work if you can't deliver to technical specs. And the main technical spec that we have is EBU R128, which means that all of the broadcasters want you to mix to a LUFS level, which is a loudness unit level on a loudness meter of NEG23. And do you know how much leeway you're allowed? So a LUF is roughly one dB which is a tiny amount, as we know. One decibel is tiny. You're allowed half a dB either way on NEG 23. So I have to deliver. And if I haven't got, if I walk into my little room and I've tweaked the, the volume knob and I start mixing, I'm looking at my meters, I'm thinking, it's funny, it's not reading NEG 20. Oh, I've not got the volume set right. So work out the volume that equates to, and there's a quick, dirty way of doing this. Um, you find, you open your digital audio workstation. Who works on Pro Tools here, right? Who works on um, Logic, okay? Who works on something else that I haven't mentioned? Ableton. Ableton. Studio One. Yeah. Reaper, anybody? Yeah. I would say to all of you, you work on whatever you like for yourselves. Work in whatever DAW you like to deliver to yourself, your own projects. But if you want to integrate with the outside world, you're going to have to learn Pro Tools. And everybody goes, oh, it's not as good as the one I, it's only not as good as the one you use, because you know the one you use much better. And I can assure you, it doesn't matter a toss which one you use in terms of quality. You, I am as capable of mixing, uh, I've, I've mixed a whole load of radio dramas on Logic, they sound exactly the same as the radio dramas I've mixed in Pro Tools. I just found it a bit more clunky because I know Pro Tools better. So the one you know better is always the one you love. But please, if you want to get into the real big world and um, play with you know, the big name mixers, you want to go to London and work with Kate Davis, a big dial, um, documentary mixer, you're going to need to learn Pro Tools. 
Um, open the DAW that you know, find a trusted WAV. I actually use a bit of just speech from Radio 4 because I know what it's peaking. And I make that, I put that on my speakers and you can tell when somebody's talking quietly. You can tell when somebody's talking a normal level and you can tell when somebody's shouting. If I'm listening to somebody talk this level, I will be expecting to see my meters peaking about halfway up and um, probably um, quieter than neg 23. If I'm talking at this level, I'll want that to peak neg 23. If I'm talking at this level, that's probably neg 21, 19. And I want my meters to tell me the same as my ears are telling me that if something is loud, it is loud. If something is quiet, it is quiet. And so I want those meters when I look across at the meters, I'm not looking at them all the time. I'm listening because your ears are the most sensitive bit of sound equipment you've got. So you mix with your ears. Well, with your fingers, okay, because it'd be odd if you just... Yeah. But you mix with your ears and hand, ear-hand coordination, and then you check that on the meters as um, um, calibration and metering are topics of whole, you know, one-hour lectures that I bore students with till they're asleep. 